Uh, my name's David Glorioso, and me and my son, uh, Fish, have pigeons here in Baltimore, Maryland. And we have apprentice Asbury Hopewell is his name. But I've had birds since 1963, November 22nd, and uh, I was 11 years old. I've had them ever since, and I'm 62. And I started racing uh, in 72, and it was about 400 men in Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and Arundel County. And it took years to fly good birds. You know, it's a lot of work involved. You have to raise your own birds and train them. You take them south, because we race out of the south. We started at 100 miles and raced all the way down to 600 miles, Atlanta, Georgia. And they're just like kids. You have to give them vitamins. You have to give them shots. The, the history of pigeon racing is unbelievable. Most people don't know. It's so big in Europe that it's like baseball. And they keep a lot of their birds up in their attics. At one time, 30, 40 years ago, every other house in Belgium, they raced pigeons. That's what they did. It was so big back during the war, the Germans used to go around collecting them, taking them from them, because they could use, put messages on them and use them as a, a war thing. And it carried on to the Americans, and Americans started doing it about 100 years ago. You see a horse run around a track a half mile and he's half dead when he gets, these birds fly from six o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. They bust their rear to get home. Asbury Anthony Hopewell. I'm the apprentice, uh, serving apprenticeship under Dave Glorioso and my main man, Fish. But one of the things that uh, Dave had failed to tell you is he's the uh, alpha male a pigeon flying in the state of Maryland and up and down the East Coast. You got guys all the way out in California that know of him because of his notoriety and how good he is in, in flying pigeons. He basically took me under his wing when I found out that I really had a serious interest now that I'm retired and I wanted to learn it. And it's like anything else, if I have the opportunity to learn something, I want to learn from someone that is at the top of the game. And, you know, once again, they call him a nickname, Mr. October, because in October, when the big races come up, money races, he went to one club over in Hamilton, and they were saying, uh, we want Dave Royal, so we want him. Everyone is sh shooting at him just like a top gunfighter. If you hear a guy's the best gunfighter around, people come from all over to challenge him because they want to be the best, and he guns them down. So he went in there. He won all the money in the big race. And as he was going out the door, everyone was saying, well, who's that that just won all the money? And he stopped and looked back, and he said, when the leaves turn brown, daddy comes to town. And we all <laughs> fell out laughing, and he walked out with the lion's share of the money. It's hard, it's hard to quit. It's a lot of guys have quit. Two years later, they're back. They miss them so bad. I mean, I let them go in North Carolina. Seven hours later, uh, they're in the coop. I'm still driving. I got an engine doing my work. I just don't see the sport staying around too much longer here in Baltimore. And it's been in Baltimore since around 1900. What I did last year was I took a bunch of trophies. I had clock trophies and us three went over there to Eastern Avenue and put birds on display. And a lot of people with their kids saw it and what are you doing? And I explained to him about racing's been around for over 100 years. And G.I. Joe was a famous pigeon that saved, what, 20,000 troops. They put a message on his leg and let him go. And he flew back and told the uh, troops don't come and save their lives and all. He's at the, uh, what's that institute he's at? Smithsonian, Smithsonian Institute. institute. They stuffed him and he's there. He saved so many people that pigeon, a pigeon.